The next thing we need to do is have it so that when we get eaten, it sets up. However, we don't have the eaten process done at all yet, so we're going to work on that now. We are going to go into our enemy controller, and we are going to create an on trigger enter 2D. We're going to say if collision dot tag equals player. Um, we're going to have if is frightened, else, and this is just going to be um, get eaten and eat player. So we are going to have a function in our game manager and it's going to be a coroutine that's going to play our death animation and all that stuff. So we're just going to call star coroutine game manager dot player eaten. Now let's go into our game manager and we're going to create that function public IE numerator player eaten. So we're going to set had death on this level to equal true so that our blue and orange ghosts will spawn quicker from less pellets. Then we're going to want to stop the game. So we want all the ghosts to stop moving. And when we stop the game, we are going to pause for a second. And then at this point, we're going to play the death animation and we want all the ghosts to go invisible. So in order to make the ghosts go invisible, we are going to create a public set visible. Um, new is, or whoops, bool, new is visible. And then we are going to create a variable up top called is visible. And we are going to set it to new is visible. And of course, make sure to add void. Whoops, is visible. Okay, so then up top, let's just create a bool, public bool is visible. And by default, we're going to set it to true. But we're just going to do this in setup. Actually, it doesn't even matter. We can just do it in our update. So we're going to say if is visible, else. Um, so if we are visible, show our sprites. Remember our ghost and our eyes are two different sprites. This is because when they turn into a frightened ghost, um, they look different. And hide our sprites. So we need to reference our sprites. We have public sprite renderer, ghost sprite, and public sprite renderer eyes sprite and we're just going to say ghost sprite equals get component the auto is just awful right now uh, sprite render and then remember our eyes are in our child component so get component in children sprite renderer and then in our update if we are visible set ghost sprite dot enabled to true and eyes sprite dot enabled to true and then otherwise set it to false so then in our game manager we can call red uh, ghost controller dot set visible to false and we're going to do this for each of our ghosts so then we're going to play our death animation so let's go to our player controller and create a new function at the bottom public void death and our game manager is going to call pacman.getComponent and instead of calling getComponent every time we could 
set it as a global var variable up top. That's up to you. Dot death. And we are going to have a sound effect, which again, we could attach to the player. Where are our audio sources? Right here. So we're gonna have public audio source death. We are going to say death.play. And then we are going to pause to wait for the animation to happen. And it takes about three seconds. Now we need to subtract our lives by one. We're going to say if lives is less than or equal to zero, which it should always never be less than zero, but it's just a fail safe. New game equals true. Um, and then we are going to display game over text and wait yield return new wait for seconds. We're just going to wait like three seconds with the game over text enabled. And then finally start quarantine our setup function. Okay, so let's create our game over text. So let's go to canvas, UI, text. I'm gonna make it red so we can see it. Okay, and then I'm gonna drag it into the middle. Let's make its font size a bit bigger. About as big as we can get. Say game over. Okay, so that font size might be a little too big. Then get it about in the middle. Okay. So we are going to reference that text at the top. Public text. Game over text. And in our setup, game over text dot enabled is going to be false. And in our player eaten, game over text dot enabled is going to be true. Okay, so when we get eaten, we set had death on this level to true so that we know that for the ghosts. We stop the animation. We wait a second, um, and then we have our ghosts disappear. We play our death animation, and then we wait for that death animation to happen. We subtract from our lives. If our lives are less than zero, then we are starting a new game, um, and our game over text will display. Wait three seconds. We'll go back to setup. Our game over text will no longer be there, and because it is a new game, it will reset all of our values. So we just did a whole bunch of stuff. Um, let's see if we even can get eaten right now. Because we didn't test that. Just make sure to drag your text. We're just going to name this to game over text. Make sure you drag that into your game manager. I'm not actually seeing it. What did I call it? Public text, game over text, okay. It doesn't seem to be loading it. Oh, it looks like it's because I have an error. Okay, yeah, so we call the death function on our player controller, um, but our player controller did not have one because I didn't save my script. So now if I save, the text should pop in here. Okay, so there's our game over text. Another thing we're gonna need to do is actually um, do our death function. This is pretty simple. We're just going to set animator dot set bool moving to false. And then we are going to call set bool and set dead to true. And this is going to trigger our death animation, which we don't have yet. So we might get a slight bug until then, but let's just see what happens if we run into a ghost. Okay, so we're getting an error. Um, I'm just gonna cut right to this because we didn't put our death into our game manager's audio source. 
oh, whoops. So we need to create a new audio source. Um, we do not want to plan awake. We're going to drag death into there. And we're just going to drag it in here. All right, let's see what happens if we touch a ghost. Okay, so I'm noticing a few things off the bat. The eyes are not hidden. Um, and the death sound is actually incorrect. The way the game worked was kind of weird. It plays, um, you can see there's two here. It plays death one and then cuts it like halfway and plays death two twice. So I ended up going into an audio editing program and just merged them myself to make it easier for you guys. So we actually want to use death three. So we're going to figure that out in a second. But then what happens? Okay, so then the ghosts do respawn, which is really good. So... I believe we want to use death three. So let's go to our audio source and drag that in there. And then it should play the right one. So you actually don't need death one and two. I just forgot to delete them. So. Okay, cool. That works. So now we need to address the eyes. It is not disabling our eyes sprite. So we call get component and children sprite renderer. Um, if is visible, set our ghost sprite and eye sprite to be true. But if we're else, set our ghost sprite and eye sprite to equal false. That is strange. Also, we're in our setup. We want to call set visible and set it to true. That way, our our ghost comes back after we are done. However, I'm not actually sure why it is not working. I'm going to load up the game and just kind of see what's going on here. So we paused. If we look at red. Okay, so reds is visible is set to false. The eye sprite renderer are set to true though. Even though our own sprite renderer is set to false. So that's very strange. Now I wonder what would happen if I set the eyes variable to false. And then unpause the game. So it stays false. So one thing I was worried about was that they were being set to true somewhere else. Um, but that does not seem to be the case. So let's make sure our eyes sprite... Oh, okay, so I found it. Our eye sprite right now is our red image. That's not good. Um, let's go to awake, get component in children, sprite renderer. So for some reason, this is grabbing our component, not our component in our child. So I'm not actually sure why this is not working. So what I'm going to do is just delete that line of code. And rather than editing the value in our awake function, I'm going to manually assign it. So you can see this eye sprite. I'm just going to drag the eyes into there. And that should solve that problem. Remember, you need to do the same thing with the other ghosts. This is typically why I do it programmatically, is so that you don't have to do it four times. And also, if something messes up, you don't need to run into this problem. But now let's oh okay so i just did all that while the game was on which means i need to do it again let's take a look at what happens i also want to get eaten three times and see if our new game works okay so that's where we would play our death animation great now our lives should be one so if we get eaten again hopefully it automatically does the game over it does. And Pac-Man won't be there during the death animation. And it resets our score, resets the game. Perfect.